Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attendance and welcome to the second uh, Equal Opportunity uh, Conference, which is under the patronage of Ahle University as well as Pronel uh, University. Can you hear me well? Okay. Uh, I want to introduce myself first. My name is Dalia Kamel, and I am the Dean of uh, uh, Graduate Studies and Research in Ahliya University, as well as I am a, a professor of uh, physical therapy for women's health in Cairo University back in Egypt. Uh, my topic, due to my background, for, uh, that's why I'm handling this in, in this presentation, uh, the gender biological differences and how can it fit into equal uh, opportunity. Um, in this slide, I want to on, only to highlight uh, the Ahlia University practices about the equal opportunity, which I'm quite sure that you hear it uh, throughout the day, that we have 50% uh, 50 50 presentation uh, between the both genders, male and females, among our Ahlia um, employees or Ahlia uh, family. Um, also, under uh, the instruction or the direction of the top management from last year, we already developed a, com a committee which which is uh, Equal Opportunity Committee to um, assure the implementation of equal opportunities among Ahliya family. As well as Ahliya University actually in this point is excelling uh, the um, standards because uh, in the leadership presentation uh, regarding female, we have four um, deans, uh, who are females, especially in two uh, colleges I wanted to highlight, in the College of Information Technology and the College of Engineering, which is in STEM uh, disciplines, as well as uh, Dean of Students Affairs and uh, myself as Graduate Studies and Research. Also, we have two President Assistants, the only assistants the Presidents have uh, for the uh, Quality Assurance and Planning and for the Public Relation, and also they are uh, females. So let's go for the core of the presentation, which I'll start by a question. What do we need for doing any job with different tasks? Actually, we need two systems in our body, the brain or the neural system, and the muscles, which are the muscular uh, systems, okay? For the brain, we need uh, this part of our body for the jobs which are requiring more intellectual or mental uh, demands. And for the muscles, we need it for the jobs which are requiring more physical uh, demands. Okay? Let's start with the brain. From this illustration, I want to ask you, what do you observe regarding the brains? Yes. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Actually, on average, the female brain is about 10% smaller than male brain. And I assure that all the males here in the hall, they say, yes, I knew it. <laughs> but I tell, I'll tell you, hold on. Because when we compare the physical uh, structure or the body built of the male in comparison to female, what do you observe as well? They are bigger, yes. So in ratio, and even the skull structure or side, the bone of the head, are smaller in female in comparison to female. So in ratio between body size and the brain, by the end, they are equal. But anatomy has another opinion, okay? From the anatomical structure of the brain, actually we are different. They are not the same. But some advantages going for the female and another advantages are going to the males. If we'll go and excuse me if I'll, I'll say some medical terms, but it will be simple by the end. If we'll go for the women, they tend to have significantly thicker cortical cortex, which is the brain. The thickness of itself is thicker in female compared, compared to a male, okay? And this gives a advantage in scoring high uh, scores on a variety of cognitive and general intelligent uh, tests. When we go to um, male, they have another advantage, which is higher brain volumes, as we mentioned, and especially in, diff in the specific part of the brain, which is called parietal loop. It's a, a part of the brain, okay? And this gives advantage for the males, especially in spatial ability or awareness, emotion, decision-making, learning, inhibition to irrelevant information, and reward processing. 
Before I leave this uh, slide, I wanted to highlight a very important rule, which is called gender rule. What's the meaning of this gender rule? It's every rule has its exception. So this means that not all the women have this ability in scoring high uh, achievement in cognitive and general intellectual tests, and not all the males having the spatial awareness. Another exception that maybe some women having the spatial abilities, and another meaning maybe some men have the, yes, uh, the high score in intelligent tests. Here, I want to illustrate another difference in the male-female brain. Actually, a part, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know. This part. Yes, it's called hippocampus. Hippocampus, or we can call it a simpler term, which is the memory center. This memory center in the female brain is denser, with a lot of neural connection and a lot of blood supply. So this gives the female the advantage of long-term memory. And we can call it camel memory, not camel, camel memory, okay? So uh, the females are absorbing and receiving a lot of sensorial and emotive information, retain it for a long time, okay? Another part which is different on gender-wise, it's called the corpus callosum. This, uh, the purple one, okay? The corpus callosum here, let's go for the left side uh, illustration. You can uh, observe the difference between the female brain on the upper part and the male uh, brain in the uh, lower part regarding the corpus callosum. In the female, it's thicker band here. This gives the advantage of female in verbal memory. In other words, females are talkative. We can use more vocabs. We can tell the same, same story in different vocabularies every time. Okay? And we can use the both sides of the brain in this verbal memory. Okay? Uh, the, the male has lacking in this uh, part of the verbal memory, so they are not willing to talk a lot. If we'll go down for the male brain, regarding the corpus callosum, it's thinner. And this is not a disadvantage by the end, because in the in males have advantage in another space orientation and distant vision. That's why they are excelling certain types of sports like volleyball, they like football, like archery, and this is advantage for them. In this illustration, I want to highlight which is called lateralization of the brain. Yes, of course, we use both sides, but sometimes with dominant or favoring of one side of the brain. So it's a common um, logic uh, among the physiologists that the left side of the brain, it's a male dominant side, so they are more relaying on the critical thinking, on the language, science, communication, and math. So we call it left lateralization. The logic is coming that the female should be right lateralization, but actually the female are bilateralization. They are using both sides of their brains. Here I wanted to highlight a very important thing, and indirectly it's affecting the brain and the whole uh, parts of our body, which are the endocrine glands. Glands which are producing hormones in a very small amount, but they have a tremendous effect on a body system, and one of them is the brain. They are sharing both genders in the same uh, endocrine glands, except in the uh, genital organs, which are producing the sex hormones, and they are different between both male and female. Regarding the sex hormones, uh, the both genders are having the same hormones, but in different amounts. We have estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, androgen, but in favoring of testosterone, sorry, of androgen, oh, I'm keeping to say the female, male hormone first. So androgen and testosterone in a huge amount for the male, but in certain small amount in females, and the same rule applied for uh, the estrogen and progesterone. 
So what is the impact of testosterone on male brain? Actually, it has a protective effect as decreasing the anxiety, the irritation, and it's antidepressant. That's why we observe more depression among females in comparison to male. Uh, and it improves the spatial ability and visual uh, spatial uh, ability. So what's the meaning of uh, spatial ability? A spatial ability, it means that the capacity to understand, to reason, and to remember the spatial relation among objects or the space. In another meaning, it's mental 3D rotation. It's the ability of the males to uh, identify the object not only from one dimension or two dimension, no, from three dimensions. That's why this ability, it fits more for mathematician and for the uh, engineering. And it's related to the parietal loop, the loop of the uh, brain I mentioned earlier. So it was observed that one in every three university professors are female, but in the STEM branch, one in five professors are female. So how we can reduce this gap to be at least one to one or one to two? How we can decrease this gap? I'll answer you by the end of my presentation. Uh, the other one, which is the effect of estrogen on the female brain. The estrogen is increasing the development of uh, hippocampus, the center of memory in the brain uh, of the female. So they have long-term memory, orientation, navigation, or spatial memory, and better verbal memory. I want also to discuss with you another ability which should be fulfilled uh, for every professional, which is the multitasking. Actually, many organizations right now or in institutions are seeking to decrease the resources, but in the same time, increase productivity. So multitasking as a skill, it became a must for every professional. And actually, this is a, an example for some professions which are needing multitasking, like a certified nursing assistant, assistant, computer programming, chef, human resources administrators, and many other uh, profession. Okay, so it's very important regarding this multitasking that the people should not choose the profession they like, but they should choose the profession they are excelling their tasks. And there is a common belief or opinion that women are more bitter or more uh, excelling the multitasking skill. Do you believe in this or no? Yes. Actually, this common opinion is supported by research, but to be fair enough, this point needs more research to be validated. And based on two researches, I already read about them, um, they tested the multitask skills between male and female, and they figured out in rapid uh, interleaved multitasks, both female and male uh, performed slowly, but men were slower than female. And when the task was asked to be repeated, of course, female performed better than a male. Uh, so, by the end, to not go into further details, women outperform men in these multitasking paradigms, but there is a need for more studies to validate this point. Another point to pay into account, which is the gender and decision making. And again, I'll start to say the hormones uh, once more. Testosterone, which is the male hormone, gives advantage for, fem for male because it's increasing the threshold for conflicts, for threats, for uh, fears and threats. In other words, it decreases the sensitivity to these feelings. So men can give decision into the bottom line. Okay, they are more decisive. Women, due to the estrogen and progesterone hormone dominance, they are more going to explore, communicate about various underlying concerns before giving a decision. But actually, this is not, not, not the real situation right now. We can see some women are very decisive. They can give 
a decision instantly, right? So why this happened? They investigated such phenomena among females in two situations. While the, the progesterone level at its lowest uh, values in the mid-cycle of the menstrual cycle, or in another situation when they administer orally the testosterone for a group of women. And they started to observe their behavior in what is called risk aversion or taking risk, financial risk. And they concluded that in these two situations, the female turned into lower risk aversion. So by the end, we can say that testosterone uh, has both organizational and activational effects on financial decision and long-term career choices. But the, raise, the question should be raised right now, why some women or majority of women nowadays are very decisive and can conclude a decision immediately? My answer, it will be by the end as well. I'm keeping you suspended. Yes. Um, uh, uh, biological mechanism or my biological difference here in between male and female, also the pain perception. Um, female having more uh, pain perception, more pain sensitivity due to their hormones as well, estrogen and progesterone, while testosterone and androgen is protective in nature and decrease the pain sensitivity in, among uh, males. Uh, let's go for the other system we use it for the jobs, which is a muscular system. Uh, the advantage goes again for male, uh, because by the effect of hormones, which is the testosterone, it's increasing the cross-sectional area of uh, the muscles. It, it makes the uh, muscles more bulky and this leads to good physical uh, performance. While on the other hand, the female's hormones increasing the muscular stiffness and ligamentous laxity, which is a disadvantage for females because there is increase of risk of physical uh, injuries. But while uh, measuring the physical performance in the mid-cycle, it increases the muscular uh, contraction. Uh, here is a very interesting point about comparing, be not between male and female, but comparing between athlete females and non-athlete female. Because if the female is going under a huge or intense physical uh, training, uh, this physical training starts to shift their hormonal profile into the male side. So they are behaving in this muscular system like male. I'll skip this one. Based what, on whatever I mentioned right now, so female has some dominant intelligence and males have another um, dominant intelligence or capability. So there are jobs which are fitting more the females than males and vice versa. I'll tell you the dominance of intelligence without further uh, mentioning to the types of jobs. You can see it right now. For the male, they are dominant in the logical, by bodily uh, kinesthetic, naturalistic and special uh, intelligence. As you can see, some jobs here, but I'll only highlight one here, which is a physical therapist. Okay, my background, I'm physical therapist, so I'm belonging to a male dominant profession. For the female, due to intelligence dominance, they are more in linguistic, in musical, interpersonal, and intrapersonal. Uh, intelligence. But from what you can see or observe in, in rabbit glance, that some of these jobs are, which are for women are occupied by men. And the same, like I mentioned right now, physical therapists. So what happened to mix between these two uh, jobs dominance uh, based on gender? I'll tell you the answer now. Okay, How we can overcome the gap between the jobs based on the gender, okay? By two things. Firstly, is the culture forces, okay? And secondly, by which is called brain plasticity. Let's go first for the culture forces, okay? All of you, I guarantee that you agree with me, culture already changed from 
the past till present. The women participation or presentation either in the education and the labor market already changed dramatically. As you can see here, I only uh, present for the secondary school enrollment worldwide for the females. Uh, in the 20, uh, sorry, 1970, it was 35% compared to 75% in 2016. And the same percentage as Ellen mentioned for the higher education. Okay, let's go for the labor market. And uh, this uh, I already extracted from the International Labour Organization, and I was surprised a little bit because they stated the percentage is decreased. As you can see here, the female participation in labour force from 51 in 1990 to 48 in 2016, and I don't know the explanation. But I was curious to see what about Bahrain, as long as we, we are here in Bahrain. It was optimistic because the percentages increased. Uh, from comparing 28% in 1990 up to 44% in 2060. Okay? I want also to highlight about the breadwinner moms, or when the female are the primary provider for the income uh, of the income to uh, families. It's based on uh, research already applied in USA, and they stated that this breadwinner moms increased from 11% in 1970 to 44% in uh, 2011, with a ratio that every four in 10 houses, they are breadwinner moms. Okay, so there is a force or culture force to introduce or to push more females into the labor market. This is a, a culture force. Let's go for the brain plasticity, or we can call it neural plasticity. And this neural plasticity actually highlights the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or our God, because he created our brains with backup plan, or ability to change and adapt as a result of experience. So we can rewire our brains. And here is a solution to increase the female participation in STEM. This is how we can use it to increase the female participation in the STEM, either a type of studying or a type of job uh, practicing. It's a very nice uh, illustration here to highlight the neural uh, plasticity. I'm coming to the end of my presentation. Neural plasticity, as you can see here, the new thoughts and skill carve out new pathways. And with repetition and practice, we transcend these pathways, forming new habits. It's like push-up for our uh, brain. Okay, and then by the end, all the pathways get used less and weaken. So with the repeated and directed uh, attention forward towards a desired change, we all have the ability to rewire our brain. So this is the solution. Interesting aspects, it hits my mind while I was preparing this presentation, and I wanted to go forth further in it, the impact of menstrual cycle in different aspects of um, work or job performance, the gender earning gap that we are keep saying since morning, which is money is a honey, so it's very important to talk about it, uh, and its contributing factor. Another interesting thing came to my mind, the comparison between women with grown up children in comparison to women with young children in the promotion and leading position achievements. So the take home, take home message that despite of all the efforts that governments and countries are trying to do uh, to compare gender uh, issues with respect to gender act uh, equality, actually men and women are different in many different or many important issues. So we need, as I said here, we need gender equity for better equal opportunity. Thank you. I'll go. As you rightly pointed out, the brain is, the brain is very plastic, and presumably when a child is born, 
their brains are also very plastic. So no. in your research, did you look at to what extent that um, children of different genders are treated differently? They play with different toys, we interact yes. them in different ways, and is that not an important factor in determining brain development right from the moment we ask you know, the, 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 the couple of, with the child and say, is it a boy or a girl? Yeah. <laughs> and from that moment forward, are we not shaping the mind of that child? Are we not embracing them in particular sorts of ways? I say, offering them one set of toys and not another set of toys necessarily. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know more about to what extent your research has explored that dimension. So, that, so rather than thinking of male and female being naturally predisposed to be one particular way, the factors, the way that culture and all the other inputs that determine um, how a student responds is just as you say, a child that might have a natural, a male child might have a natural ability to be very verbal, a child, a female child that's not exposed to playing with um, tangrams or other sorts of uh, spatial manipulation toys is less likely then to develop those mm -hmm. skills than a boy that has sort of said, oh, here, you play with this, you know, you have this Lego set, you have this, um, you know, ele electronics kit, you have yes. this chemistry set, and then we'll throw the little soft toy to the girl and we'll cuddle her and we'll tell her how beautiful she is. You know, mm -hmm. to what extent do th those things are also shaping yes. the mind as yes, a child yes, develops? Yes. Thank you for your question. Actually, I want to highlight uh, at the beginning that uh, neural plasticity, it's not plastic. It's not plastic, it's different. Plastic? <laughs> okay. But uh, um, neural plasticity, from my background, we are relying on it hugely uh, for the rehabilitation. When we are dealing with patients like hemiplegia, paraplegia, quadriplegia, we are relying on this neural plasticity uh, to rehabilitate the patient and regain at least uh, the يعني, whatever we can uh, achieve in the normal uh, function. Uh, regarding about shaping of our children, uh, regarding the neural plasticity, I totally agree agree um, with you about the segregation as parents we are doing from the beginning to our children that the toys uh, or the dolls for the girls and the whatever the cars for uh, the uh, boys um, I'm supporting the idea that this neural plasticity or at least uh, the intelligent tests uh, should be applied from the beginning, from the nursery, from the kindergarten to identify our children's abilities. And from, that, from this point, we can build on to uh, develop their abilities either into the STEM, into the literature, or whatever the intelligence they are scoring uh, more uh, into it. For this should be embedded in our curriculums and since the start from kindergarten or nursery to identify from the beginning and avoid the stereotyping. We are not in need so more. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes. My worry about the physical and medical data is that it will make people or it will make women and men accept reality. About what? They, they, well, as you have said, you know, the difference in, uh, in endocrine and in yes. brain. And yeah. So is this, uh, how do you think if this is sort of declared and made understood to all from school level, do you think this will have an impact on the education system right from the beginning, from nursery to the, you know, the higher degrees. Mm -hmm. It will sort of segregate and it will pipeline different mm -hmm. disciplines and professions. Yeah. At the same point that I raise it right now with Mary is that we want to embed this point from the beginning, from the kindergarten, that we wanted to identify which type of intelligence in each of our children and avoid the stereotyping about uh, boys and girls. So to identify it and build on it, uh, as we mentioned, yes, we have the nature, the biological difference, but due to the neural plasticity ability, we can shift to uh, what, what we are يعني, more capable uh, to do. And uh, that's it. 
Yes, from school, from uh, the beginning, nursery, KG1, KG2. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Yeah? Okay. Hi, yeah, I wonder Hi. what you think about Lisa Elliott's book, Pink Brain, Blue Brain, that she would disagree fundamentally with you. Um, no, unfortunately, I didn't read it. Oh, okay. Oh. So she's professor of neuroscience at Chicago University, and her book in 2009 was called Pink Brain, Blue Brain, and it basically brain? says... Pink brain, blue Pink brain. brain. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And it's it. She she basically says that the physical differences between male and female brains are as important as say the physical differences between male and female kidneys, kidney or livers. Yeah. And that all the differences really in gender are taught. All, all of these, the, the reason that girls are supposedly better at nurturing and speaking and all of that is because they're taught to be better at those things. So it's nothing, she says it's nothing to do with the physicality of the brain. I don't know, but... I'll, uh, I'll send you a link. Okay, but if you can see the, end, uh, the ending statement... Uh, of my presentation that we need more equity, that every gender has its own needs or own capability. We need to fulfill this equity to have equal opportunity. By end, we are different genders with, with different ab abilities and we should uh, appreciate this different and not take it against each one. Yeah, I agree with you. There are obviously differences between yes. genders, but but the issue is why. You, and you're saying that it's a physical difference that we're all born that way. Yeah. And she has said in 2009 that that's not true. That it's it's nearly all cultural and social. So. I just think you should know her work at least. Uh, I, maybe I'm, I'm getting yeah. interested, yes. but when the anatomy, uh, the examination of cadavers are exploring these parts and relating to the physiology or how yeah. our brains uh, is working, so... Uh, yeah, look, I, I'm not a neuroscientist, yeah, yeah. and nor are you, Yes, um, but she is. Okay. So it's definitely worth reading. But, but we, we are not on different tracks because we say, we admit from the beginning that there are biological differences, but due to the advancement in the neuroscience, we can diminish this uh, biological differences or gaps. Okay. Anyone else where I go? Go? Uh, so 